ask you some good questions about Starship Ellie. Hey. Can, there we go. Can you hear me? Yeah. Hey, Elon, first of all, thanks for hosting this space. This is really great. Um, and I was just curious in the midterm, what is the priority with Starship to develop and demonstrate refueling capability, work on the HLS variant, or are you just in general still proving the concept? No, I, I think I, I'm just like I said, I, I really want to lower expectations as much as possible here um, and use this as an example the, you know, the Soviet N1 um, rocket, which, was, which is really the closest rocket comparable to Starship. And, and Starship is in some ways uh, more risky than the, the N1. It's a lot more thrust. It's running a higher chamber of pressure. It's a full flow stage bush, and it's got a cryogenic fuel. Um, cryogenic fuel uh, has the added risk of gas of, of fuel gasifying and forming a fuel air, you know, a fuel oxygen pocket, which then, it's, you know, if, 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 if you get a, a fuel ox pocket forming that, that lights off, it's it's a, a gigantic boom. Um, so it, like, like even if, even if it happened in an engine compartment, uh, it would really be quite uh, quite bad. Now we do have um, we, we are running nitrogen purge on the you know, like as, as much as we possibly can on the uh, engines that you know on the launch pad, and then we have a CO two purge in flight, so that should mitigate the risk. Uh, but it you know you, you can if if the engines the engines can always leak faster than you can. Approach. So that's possible, and then you, you can, um, like I said, get get a, a fuel air a fuel air combination, and that is the curtain. So this is, it's it's a very risky flight. This is not uh, something that is a, a sure thing at all. Um, um, I guess I'm just wondering, in the next few months, if we see a successful flight, you know, what happens next? Yeah, I. I I, I think I just need to set expectations that, uh, that it probably won't be. Um, and maybe the second one will be, and maybe, or maybe the third one will be, but probably tomorrow will not be successful. Uh, if, if by success, one means reaching orbit. Um, this is not to say that there's, like, there's something we're aware of, that if we were something we were aware of, we would deal with it, but there isn't anything we're aware of. It's just a very fundamentally difficult thing. Like that's why I preface it by saying that the Soviet uh, rocket engineers, which really was, was the entire Warsaw Pact, frankly, um, uh, the, their combined capabilities still resulted in failure despite maximum motivation, and they were the A-team. Um, so just please set your expectations appropriately. That is what success is not what should be expected tomorrow. Um, that, that would be insane. So, uh, but we've made a number of improvements with it. Anyway, I, I, I sorry, and I, I will need to go back to work uh, shortly. So, um, the, what, what actually matters here is the, the, the fact that we are, we are building rockets at a rapid pace. So we've, we've got booster nine, chip 26, um, almost ready to go and we have a steady cadence of rocket production afterwards and with significant improvements between each uh, iteration of the rockets. Um, so you can think of the, 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 the payload for, for this mission is information, uh, information that allows us to improve the design of um, future uh, Starship builds. That is our only goal. If we get any information that allows us to improve the design of, of uh, upcoming Builds of Starship, then it is a success. It is purely, if purely learning. Um, so, yeah, that's that's really what matters here. Um, now, in, in the long term, and so it's a difficult to predict what will happen between now and then. Um, but in, in the, the long, long run, long run meaning I don't know, two or three years, um, we. We should, we should achieve full and rapid reusability. Um, but the physics of this design not allow for that um, in a way that Falcon 9 does not. Um, because we've got much higher performance engines, it's a, there's, some econ there's some economies of scale. Um, 
and um, we're using a, a propellant that is a higher ISP. So, um, with full wrap reusability, will will mean that the, the cost of a Starship flight will be less than the cost of an expendable Falcon One. Um, so, meaning. Maybe it's a few a million dollars per flight or a few million dollars per flight or something like that. If you have a high flight rate and you have full wrap reusability, even a rocket the size of Starship might, you know, might might be a million dollars a flight or something. So, um, which just kind of boggles the mind. Um, and and then then you combine that with orbital refilling, um, which requires this sort of a ship docking with a ship, which we. We know how to do because we've figured out docking with the Dragon. And if we're docking with ourselves, that's way easier than docking with the space station. That's another question. Um, so so I, like the exciting thing, I think, is that this is this is an actual path to being a multi-planet civilization. Like that's, that success, the, the fact that success is one of the possible outcomes is the amazing thing. Um, now we need to make it from being one of the possible outcomes to actually being probable. That's very difficult. Um, so we've got an arduous uh, two or three years ahead of us um, with probably you know many bumps on the road, but at the end of that, it sh- we, sh- we should have something that enables uh, a base on the moon and a, a base on Mars. Um, and we really, really are signing this for just a. a at extremely high mass flux to the to the moon and Mars, uh, and, and you know we can do both. Um, <laughs> so, uh, but you really need an, an immense amount of mass. Um, you know, rough order of magnitude, probably you know five million tons to useful load to Earth orbit to get to a million useful tons to Mars surface. Um, which is probably probably what you need for a self-sustaining civilization. And in order to um, pass uh, the <clears throat> great filter effectively, uh, sort of a, one of the sort of Fermi, Fermi paradox great filters, which is all we multi-planet species or not, the Mars has to be self-sustaining, <laughs> which means if, if the ships stop coming for any reason whatsoever, Mars must not die out. That's the that's the, really the, the threshold. And then we as a civilization need to achieve that threshold before uh, global thermonuclear warfare or, or any other kind of uh, event that eradicates uh, civilization. That's the essential test. Um, so which comes first? Uh, you know, hopefully never World War III, but uh, it might be. Um, and the, or, or, or it could also be the case that civilization gradually subsides um, and it dies, you know, in a, in a whimper with adult diapers instead of with a bang. But either way, we, we, we've got to make hay while the sun shines. <laughs> and and we are at this brief moment in civilization where it's possible to become a multi-planet species. And uh, hopefully that word just stays open long enough for us to, to actually do it. Um, that's our goal. Um, yeah. I think we've got a chance, but it's us. Uh, I see. Hey, Elon, this is uh, Joey. Can you hear me? 